Hey everyone, how's it going? Um, I'm Jamie, I'm the co-founder of uh, Interstate, as, uh, as Dave said. We, uh, we help companies measure their marketing, and so I'm just gonna talk a little bit about um, measuring marketing, some problems that you run into kind of once you get to higher spend volumes, or just kind of in general systemic problems with measuring marketing once you have multiple touch points before a user converts. Uh, so I'm gonna give a pretty quick talk and then open it up to some questions. Um, so, I mean, the biggest thing with, with metrics attribution or marketing attribution is just understanding this question, which is, I have a bunch of clicks and then someone converts either to, you know, an email sign up or in this case to a purchase, um, and who gets the credit, right? Uh, and so, it's a pretty complicated question. You'll see a lot of people just kind of say, like, well, in this case, AdWords gets the credit because it's the last thing before the purchase, or, you know, Facebook gets the credit because it's the first thing that the user came through, um, and kind of reality is like a little bit more nuanced. And so if we look at how each of these platforms specifically defines who gets the credit, um, it's a little interesting. So um, this is what Facebook does. I don't know if you guys can read this, but this says one day after viewing ad, 28 days after clicking on an ad. So if you're spending your money on Facebook and you're, you go into your dashboard, look at your reporting, uh, you know, say you have a Facebook pixel that's tracking conversions, then Facebook's gonna say, um, you know, I viewed the ad on Monday and then I purchased on Tuesday morning. And even if I didn't click on the ad, in your dashboard you're gonna see Facebook like, oh, you got one purchase. Um, and so that's called a one day view. And then they also take credit for 28 days of click activity. So it's like if I click on the ad on March 1st and then I convert, you know, 27 days later because you know I my friend told me about it again that's going to also show up in your Facebook dashboard as a conversion and so they're taking credit for like one day of view 28 days of click by default Twitter I know you can't read this but I figure in case we distribute the slides later it's useful um, they take credit for one day view and 14 day click by default like these are just the defaults, so a lot of these guys will let you change this. You can change Facebook to no view and one day click or you know, kind of whatever. Um, but this is what Twitter does by default. So if we look at AdWords, which is the, the third thing in our conversion path, um, they don't take credit for views. So if you view, you know, you do a Google search and you see like a link uh, or like an AdWords ad on the sidebar, they don't take any credit for you viewing that, but if I click on that ad and then, you know, 75 days later, I convert in that, in that person's AdWords dashboard, they're gonna see that there was a purchase and they got value for it. Um, so, obviously this is like somewhat problematic and so, you know, just for, the, for an example, uh, in this case, I don't know if you can read the numbers up here, but it says we have a Facebook visit on 3.1, Twitter visit on 3.5, AdWords visit on 310, and then a purchase on, on the 15th. And so, based on like the default attribution of each of these you know, channels, like this is what you're gonna see. You log into your Facebook dashboard, it's gonna be like you got 100 bucks. Uh, Twitter, same thing. Google, same thing. And so, obviously it's not great that you add all these up and you have $300, which is three times the amount of money you actually made. In an ideal world, it's gonna look something you know, more like this, which is, you know, we had three visits, there was a conversion, we're gonna give all equal credit. Some people have different philosophies on this, some say like, oh, you should give the last one a little bit more credit, some say you should give the first one a little bit more credit. Really that depends on your, is kind of unique to your business. And, um, but you know, it's something in between, right? It's something where everything's sharing a piece of the credit because obviously it wasn't just Google that drove this purchase, it wasn't just Facebook, it was kind of all three of them combined. So. Um, you know, contrast that with this, which we just talked about, which is, you know, everything adds up to 300 versus everything adding up to 100. So, you're like, well, that's fine. I have the ability to kind of change the parameters in this, in my ad dashboards. I'll just change everything to one day click, and then everything will be okay. Um, you know, that doesn't always work either, because in this example, you know, say they signed up after they viewed one of these ads, and then I sent them an email, and then that's what caused them to purchase and you're gonna look at the dashboard and see you know, zero dollars, and that's not true either. Um, if I change it to seven days, then like AdWords is gonna get all the credit, but 
again, like we said before, like that may or may not be an accurate representation of, you know, what you actually want. So the point here is that, you know, if you're just using publisher dashboards to kind of understand your marketing, you're gonna get like an incomplete, sometimes wrong, and often confusing picture of, you know, how your ads are actually performing. So there's a couple alter alternatives that you can do here. And, you know, the first one is that Google Analytics actually has some attribution tools built into it. Um, they work okay, they work well if you're just using Google and you're just paying for Google uh, platform-based spend. And if you're not attributing very much stuff that's like, uh, you know, outside of Google. So if you're using Facebook and you want to do this, you're going to have to manually export your Facebook data, get it into the right format, upload it into Google Analytics, match up all the URLs, and it just becomes kind of a process. If you're using Google and just Google only spend, this can be a valuable alternative. Um, but anyways, like, this involves dumping data at Excel, messing with it, and putting it into Google. The other alternative is to just store all your own data on like what your users are doing, kind of build this whole thing yourself, download all the spend data at Excel, and kind of like build your own model. And so this is obviously like very time consuming as well. Um, you know, a lot of companies we see, because um, I, I had a consulting company in the past where we work with people on this kind of stuff, um, would try something like this and you know, get to some version of completeness before just kind of giving up or not continuing to work on it anymore. Um, and that's, that's kind of like the other alternative, is you can do kind of a build your own data and do it that way. Um, you know, the other alternative is that you do nothing. And, you know, if you're a small company, if you're spending less than, say, $10,000 a month on advertising, this is honestly probably the best thing to do, because, you know, we're saying like, oh, you look in Facebook and you look in Google and you look in Twitter and the data's not perfect. Um, but none of the data is going to be perfect when you're small because there's not a lot of data. Um, you know, it's just not, it's just not going to be super important. Generally, you're not going to see a situation in where uh, you're spending five to ten thousand dollars a month on marketing, and when you're attributing it perfectly, everything looks great. And when you're just using the publisher tools, like, you know, it looks bad, or it's not going to give you the wrong idea, basically. Uh, if something's working at $5,000 in spend, it's gonna be probably pretty obvious, and changing the attribution model isn't gonna really change that. Where this stuff starts to matter a lot is for companies that are spending you know, over $10,000 a month, you know, 10, 20, 30, $40,000 a month, $100,000 a month in spend, and then you really get to the question of, how do I move around my advertising budget in order to make things work? And that's when answering the question of, who do I give credit to for what becomes important, um, because that's, telling me, oh, what's my ROI on Facebook, what's my ROI on Twitter, what's my ROI on Google, and I need to understand that really well. Um, so, you know, briefly, we build a tool that does this for like larger companies. We're not the only one, uh, but like we try and make it really easy for people to automatically import spend and like answer this question. Um, you know, like I said before, if you're spending less than $10,000 a month, don't even worry about it. Just keep using Facebook's publisher reporting. Be cognizant of what's happening. And make sure that you understand that like the default view is giving a lot of credit to Facebook because that's what's in their best, in best interest to do for themselves. But just tune it, play around with it. Come to your own conclusions of like how well you actually think it's performing and then move forward from there. And as you grow spend, you know, start to look at different alternatives in the market for you know, understanding the best answer to this question of what is my actual ROI in the advertising? that I'm advertising dollar that I'm spending. So with that, I'll just you know, take any questions on measuring marketing. What about non-paid oh, non attribution channels? So you know, it's great when it's like you know, display Facebook ads or whatever. You know, how, do you, how do you, essentially like I don't know of any vendors that are not Super enterprise that startups can use that can do that can do multi-channel attribution that is not only for paid. Uh, yeah. So basically, what's required to do unpaid attribution is just that you have unique URLs for everything that you're trying to attribute. And so, you know, for someone like Interstate, for us, like anything with a UTM parameter in it, we can tell you. You know, we 
we can proportion a value of like the conversion or the conversion dollar value back to that thing. Um, but for something, if you don't have unique URLs, it's impossible to tell because I have no idea that you, you know, uh, type my website into the browser or you click the link that your friend sent you if it all just goes to the same destination, really. Um, so it's possible, but you have to, you know, control the URLs in order to actually understand where the people are coming from.